Balance patches are a pretty incredible tool. The idea that how strong or weak certain options are can be adjusted while the game is out, while you have stuff like ranked or a competitive scene to base your changes off, allows games to be more balanced than ever before. Back in the day, there was almost no way to actually change the balance. This meant a lot of options in old games just never ended up ever becoming good, and were just delegated to the realm of bottom tier forever. But this isn't the case anymore since they can always be buffed now. However, buffing can go wrong, and in a world where most developers don't want to go back on changes they've already made, because if they do, well, it just doesn't really look like they know what they're doing, having the wrong impact could lead to something never getting fixed. Today, I want to talk about what to look for when buffing options, and give a good example of how not to do it. So, if you enjoy the video, you can be sure to subscribe to tune into more content from me. And without further ado, let's get right into it. So, when talking about buffing an option, I think the best thing to establish first is how a weapon feels. So let's look at blasters in Splatoon. Blasters have a shot that can hit around corners, due to the blast radius, and a one-shot direct, which makes them slayers and great at fighting other opponents. However, they have mobility issues since they're a little bit slower, and have a hard time painting the map, which in a game where painting the map equals more places to move around the map, can be a big problem. Additionally, because painting charges your special, blasters have a lower special output. This is the basic archetype of blasters and how they feel. So if blasters are to be changed via buffs or nerfs, it is important to change it in the way so that it still feels like a blaster. So, for example, blasters could easily be buffed by just increasing their painting power, and this would absolutely make the weapon better and see more usage, which in a way can be seen as the point of buffing. However, this makes blasters not really feel like the same weapon class. Blasters aren't about painting and special output, so buffing this attribute of the weapon takes away from blasters' identity. It doesn't feel like the same weapon with these changes. Even though this is a net positive, it's taking away from the weapon's design. A better buff would be to reduce or remove the jump spread it has. Now, this gives Blaster another option which helps a bit with mobility and helps it get kills, but it doesn't take away mobility as a weakness, it doesn't do anything to help with its paint or special output. In the end, it just gives the weapon another option, which makes it a lot more fun to play and keeps true to the weapon's identity. The point with this example is that while buffs should absolutely strive to make a weapon better, it should still fit within its core design. It should feel like enhancing the weapon's playstyle, not changing it. So with that being said, let's take a look at Bamboo. Bamboo is part of the Charger class, typically weapons with a good bit of range, a one-shot, and a charge time before they can fire. But when you look at Bamboo and use it in the training room for the first time, the first thing you're going to notice is it actually doesn't one-shot, which the first reaction is probably going to be, oh man, this weapon absolutely sucks. However, use the weapon more and you'll start to see it has a ton of positives. It has a good amount of painting and special output with its fast charge time, it has great mobility, insane DPS being one of the best weapons in the game at shredding objects, good tap shot range that matches its full charge, something no other charger can do, and it has a bigger hitbox. The whole weapon design is trade-offs for not having a one-shot, and because of this, it feels completely unique compared to other weapons, even those in the charger class. It actually has one of the most dedicated groups of weapon mains as well, people who've played the weapon since it came out or since they got into it and has a whole Twitter account about posting memes about it almost daily. That's pretty insane. Even though the weapon only showed a moderate amount of use, it was clear that it had a ton of potential and just needed some time. Hell, even 2018 me realized that. In terms of buffs, Nintendo started off on the right foot, increasing its movement speed, helping with its pain a little bit, increasing the charge speed in the air, helping with damage to objects, helping with its partial charge curve, all that good stuff. And then eventually, they added a tiny little ability called Main Power Up, which if you ran enough of it, could allow Bamboo to do 99.9 .9 damage. Meaning if you touched enemy ink for a tiny little frame, and then got shot by the Bamboo, you just get instantly deleted from the game. Well, they just totally changed the design of the entire weapon and gave it a really drastic buff. I'm sure this totally won't have any negative repercussions whatsoever. Oh, never mind. There they are. The community also doesn't really like this weapon as much anymore, considering it's now a super fast, bigger hitbox one-shot, and even players who main Bamboo aren't all in favor of this change. Sure, it makes the weapon better, but it doesn't really feel the same. There's even some Bamboo players who don't use main power up on the weapon, despite the fact that it turns it in from a high tier to one of the best, if not the best weapons in the entire game, because it takes that much away from it. 
Buffs are still a great thing, but it's important to look at them as more than just making a weapon better. It's about keeping the weapon's design the same and enhancing the feel of it rather than taking attributes of it away. The big reason this buff for Bamboo is so bad is just because it takes away from the weapon's identity. That idea of being a charger that isn't a one-shot just kind of gets thrown out the window when you give it the ability to one-shot and it takes away from how the weapon feels. Nintendo's done a really good job with buffing overall. I've been harsh on them for Bamboo because it's such a bad example, but for the vast majority of weapons, they handle it pretty well. Game balance is a really tricky decision. Not only are you trying to buff and nerf weapons while keeping their design the same, you have to keep into account the usage rate, all levels of play, and a bunch of individual metas about stuff like special weapon balance, sub weapons, main weapons, and how the whole thing is combined. There is a lot to look into. Game balancing is like multiple jobs at the same time. You're just bound to mess up somewhere. At the end of the day, the more we learn about game design and how to properly buff weapons, the better it'll be overall. Nintendo has certainly improved at their balancing over the years, and I'm sure Splatoon 3 will lead to even better game balance than Splatoon 2 has. Hopefully we can see a top tier bamboo that really sticks with the weapon's archetype and isn't a one shot. But let me know your guys' thoughts on buffs and balance design. Do you agree that Bamboo was poorly buffed, or do you like the main power-up change? Be sure to let me know, and thank you all so much for watching.